Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so nice to see all, all of you. Uh, this is module two of the masterclass series with Creative 971 and Creative Zone. Uh, today's topic will be about payment gateways and setting up a bank account as, a, as an e-commerce and drop shipping company. Uh, we have with us our esteemed panelists from Creative Zone Concierge and from Creative 971. Um, I'll just quickly tell you about these two different companies. Creative Zone is a business setup company. Uh, many of you are familiar with us already. Uh, Creative Zone Concierge is basically the services that we provide to you as a business owner uh, for any assist you need when it comes to opening a bank account um, and any other related services that you need as a business owner. And so from the Concierge team, we have Meryl Zafra who will be answering any of your questions with regards to opening a bank account, the best bank accounts, any of that uh, sort of information. And then of course we have Julie, Julia and Nico from Creative 971 who are a boutique e-commerce um, platform here in the UAE who can help you and get your e-commerce business up and running in the Middle East uh, through their uh, uh, Shopify services. Um, we had a session last week on how to start your e-commerce and dropshipping business and how to set up that business in the UAE and how to find out the rest, the best uh, jurisdictions. Um, the recording of that video is up on YouTube already. Um, I'll make sure that link is in the chat for anyone who missed that session. Today's session will also be up on YouTube if you miss it. And uh, without further ado, uh, we're five minutes in. I'm gonna hand the floor to, to Julia, Nico and Meryl. Thank you very much, uh, Zishan. Always a pleasure to have you there. I think quick announcement as well will be um, I mean, we're the leading Shopify agency in the region, so we're also doing uh, everything around e-commerce and dropshipping, but at the moment in this series, we touch on a lot, you know, in the in topics of dropshipping, so this will be a more dropship focused series. And um, what's interesting, we're actually running an official Shopify meetup on the 16th of November, which I think Zishan will also then be sharing the link that will be um, in terms of a Shopify meetup that is catered around dropshipping. But nevertheless, I think what is also exciting is our personal uh, meetup then on the 25th of November following the last session of the training series. So yeah, thank you for, for being here. And um, I think we can start. We have um, prepared a couple of questions that we usually get asked from, from people that Meryl gets asked you know, on, a, on a daily basis that we get asked when working with e-commerce and you know, especially like the payment, uh, banking and uh, logistic side of things is something that is not directly your business, but somehow very necessary for you to be um, sorted um, because kind of, you know, it, it always relates back to you as a business if those things are not working out, if those, let's say, networks and the structure isn't set or isn't, isn't uh, streamlined. So what we've done we will cover a couple of questions that we know in a, in a panel format that each of us will highlight and give you the most information needed on the frequently asked questions that we've prepared that we come across uh, since uh, years, you know, and since from people uh, left, right and center. So we just wanted to share that with you first. And once this is through, we actually give you the chance to individually ask your questions, um, you know, if they haven't been already clarified in the questions itself. So. Um, yeah, without further ado, I think we can share the screen and, and jump in right away. I think there is a chat and there is a Q&A session that we see questions keeping and popping up. Um, and once we've been through the actual questions raised or the actual topics, then we would allow you to ask questions and, and to answer them, of course, as well. All right. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share the screen now, the presentation. If any of you have questions, feel free to write your questions in the chat or use the question box. Uh, all four of us will be monitoring these chats, so we will answer your question in real time. Yeah, I'm sharing my screen now. All right, can we? Can you see my screen? All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's just jump right into the direct questions. <clears throat> yeah. So first of all. I think the first slide we're focusing on the bank account and payment gateway questions and um, I think we do get that a lot like most of us are experts here in the UAE and, and the biggest question is, you know, living in the country for a couple of years or or not, you know, maybe just moved here, but how does it work, how can I apply to a business bank account, 
probably what bank is the best and how do I go about this? So, I mean, we have our replies, but for sure, Meryl is the expert from the concierge team. So we definitely be both of us answering the, the question. So what do you think, Meryl, on that um, question asked? Thank you, Julia. Hi, everyone. My name is Meryl. So I'm going to discuss and give a few details uh, with, for the first one. Yeah. So everyone, like Julia was mentioned, everyone's like basically expat in the UAE. When it comes to business banking, um, there are a couple of documentation or like basic requirements from the bank's perspective, right? So we need to complete those requirements um, before we submit to the bank. So what we do, what I do as a procedure for banking, we shortlist all the banks that are applicable for the business setup, right? Because we need to consider ju the jurisdiction of the company, how many shareholders, and if all the shareholders are actually living here in UAE, right? So based on those basic information, we shortlist a couple of banks that's applicable for your business, for the company business account. And then each bank has a different process and procedure. There are some banks that has online application, and there are some banks that we need to visit the bank the branch bank. So upon checking all the documents, everything completed, we will apply, we will submit the application for the bank and it will go through the through the review. What bank is the best? So basically, um, most of the banks here works all the same. They have all the online platform, they have all the mobile application. Um, and then for, for the best banking, basically, we would normally ask the applicant, what is your basic requirement, right? Are you having an international transaction? Do you have a local transaction only? Are you working mostly in cash or check, right? So part of those initial um, review, we will base on what's your required for the company. And then again, we will have the, the best bands that suits for you, right? So um, that's the initial um, basically information for the business banking. Yeah, uh, thank you, Meryl. I think that that's very valid. I think also what what do what, or what does get like neglected a bit is, first mm -hmm. of all, checking which bank you're eligible to go with, because a lot of times, you know, it's all about, oh, I need that license. And once you have the license, you completely forgot the rest. Um, so banking and logistics is, is a big step, you know, that impacts your flow of your business. And I think also to keep in mind, are charges right like what Meryl said is very essential there's a lot of businesses that do take you know smaller bills let's say below 500 dirham transactions yeah. and those are mm -hmm. most likely to be cash transactions right whereas larger transactions like you know we work with um for example in the e-commerce uh, business industry so if you want to work or pay a, a website or a service for us most likely our payments are all like bank transfers or you know direct deposits or probably as well checks I have rarely people coming in with an, a bunch of cash, you know, which we anyways wouldn't be accepting. So it depends on the nature of business. And then what you would always have to check is the charges, right? If if sometimes online online banking charges can vary in, in the UAE from as low as maybe 10 or 12 dirham plus VAT from the bank charge, but they can go up immensely up to 50 or 60 dirham per online transaction. So here it really makes sense you know, for the long time success of your business to really look into the details and understand, you know, the charges. Um, sometimes banks have monthly charges on just retaining the bank account. So um, sometimes banks say you have to keep a minimum of 100,000 or 200,000 in your bank account in order not to be charged a penalty. So those things come on top, which um, I think can kind of scare away a lot of people from the beginning. But uh, yeah, that's why we're here to, to probably clarify that a bit. And yeah, thank you, Meryl, for the update. I think that that totally answers the first question perfectly well yeah yeah i think we have a question here like what's the should we tackle this now the the reason of decline of business account opening we can tackle those questions now because as we go through we have the banking the payment gateway and the logistics so maybe let's tackle that as we're right in the topic of bank accounts okay. now yeah yeah so based on my on the experience and all the feedbacks from different clients and banking, there are a couple of uh, factors when it comes to declining the business account. Unfortunately, um, there are some banks that don't give, give the direct answer because due it's to inter internal procedures or internal policy. There are some banks that willing to provide the, 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 the reason why it's declined. Um, 
based on on all the past cases that I've handled, some of the the reason that is dec declined because the business profile is not clear enough to show uh, to the banker, right? For example, for e-commerce, right? E-commerce is like a huge world. So if we're doing e-commerce, I think we need to at least um, be straightforward on our business plan, what we are going to sell, right? We cannot sell like A to Z. We need to focus at least what are the business profile or what is your business all about, right? And of course, to add on that, we need to be in line based on your business activity, right? So if you have, for example, a different business activity, you need to be in line as well with your business profile. So basically, it's like your CV, right? We are, I'm always saying to the client, we are the applicant, the banks are the employer. So they want to see a clarification, a clear picture of what your business is all about. So that's another reason of, of banks why they have declined, uh, the reason of, of not successful opening for an account. Yeah, and I think there's another question on Elil or Elil. I have ADCB account, company account, and I'm recruiting. Do I need to get salary account? So what is your take on that, Mary? Yeah. Um, ADCB, I'm recruiting. Okay, so basically, if you have an ADCB business account, sorry, I have recruiting from my company. Shall I get a salary account? So basically, it's totally up to you, right? So ADCB, they for sure they have a WPS system. As everyone is expert here, they know the WPS system, right? That's the code for the salaried employee, right? So if you have a, having the business account with that certain bank, it would be better as well if you use us for the salary of your staff or for the salary of yourself. So at least you have one platform for the banking, if, if that makes sense, if I hope that answered the question. Yeah, I think it does answer the question. But also if your staff, for example, has existing bank accounts somewhere else already, it's not hindering you to transfer WPS, it's probably just taking longer um, to, to be transferred because WPS Payments are payments you have to register through the salary transfer system. So they will go anyways um, uh, workable through. Then another question. Um, I think we should pay attention when dealing with cash for the anti-money laundering. Um, that's for sure. I think, Meryl, I don't know if you have further information, but I don't have as much depth because we're not dealing much with cash transactions anyways. Um, all right. So based on all, all of all the cases, again, I've handled basically here in UAE, cash transaction, we can still do transaction. Obviously, people are still using cash, but I think I think 80, 70 to 80 percent people actually using internal transfer, you know, wire transfers. Right. But dealing with cash, it's a little bit crucial, especially if we are hand, if we're talking about large amount of money. Right. For example, if I have a business account and client paid me 100,000 dirhams cash, of course, this is something questionable from the banks, right? Because an obvious reason who will carry 100,000 cash on hand and pay with you, right? Maybe a little less amount would be possible. But if you have continuous cash transaction on your business account, let's say on daily basis or weekly or monthly, you have a huge transaction of cash account, it will be highlighted by the bank, right? Because mostly now it's wire transfer, internal, online payment. That's why now nowadays most of the banks has the moment application or the portal for the banking so when it comes to cash it's a little bit crucial that's why i always advise the client be careful when it, uh, dealing with cash transaction there are some country that brings a lot of cash here right i heard they still pay cash when they do shopping when they pay someone that is totally understandable but it cannot be continued like all throughout your business account will be cash, right? So there's there's a lot of involved. There's um check, you can receive wire transfer, cash is again is fine, but just be careful in the future. Yeah. Um I think there's a lot of payments to um cash then as well. Is WPS valid for one employee? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. At the moment, this employee is under your um, visa. You have to include it, even if it's one employee. This is, as per my knowledge, is it the same for you, Meryl? Yes. Yeah, so basically, if if the your employee is under the company license, uh, it needs to be uh, with the WPS because 
um, as far as I know, um, it's I think they might question like why why your uh, um, your staff is not salaried under WPS. I believe, as far as I know, cash or giving cash or check is not. Uh, really legalized. Correct me if I'm wrong. If you know about it, Yulia. But as far as I know, it should be WPS. If your employee is under your company's license. Correct. If it's under your company visa, it needs to be WPS for the uh, labor department to verify that the employee has been paid according to labor agreements. This is what I know. I'm not sure how about the free zones, but I think as far as Dubai laws go, this is what I would suggest. Um, to be safe, but you can always verify that, of course, with your business license expert from Creative Zone. I think they will be much be much more valuable on on the visa or on the status if there is anything from that. But yeah, I would I would totally say the same. And then I think also Isan has a question on on based what uh, Meryl mentioned in the first uh, question answered. So uh, mm -hmm. in terms of lesser strict rules, etc., please be aware that banking rules in the UAE are federal laws they're not individual emirate based. So there is no specific emirate that has less strict rules, et cetera. So you literally have to follow that on a um, federal level. Yeah, uh, if I may add to that, uh, Yulia. Um, yeah. So basically, yeah, you're right on that. Um, only the difference would be each bank has their own procedure or different ways of having the first approval, second approval, or how their internally work procedure. But yes, when it comes to basic rules, it's all linked to the UAE Central. There's no such thing as lesser strict. It's just about how, how they will do their internal procedure upon reviewing and upon doing all the approvals. Correct. Yeah. And I think there is a gentleman, Mr. Leo, if I'm a tax resident, but not living in the UAE, so as you meaning tax resident in the UAE under company tax, under company VAT, um, and um, an op and I open a bank account and get a merchant facility. I think it's merchant, merchant yeah. facility. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Um, I, I quite do not understand the question. Could we specify the question? Or Meryl, do you understand the question? Uh, I'm not really clarified because I don't want to mention other things. So maybe if, if Leo can retype um, or clarify the question. Specify that question, it would be great. Yeah. We could address that. Yeah. Meanwhile, let's just uh, put forward the next question then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think, Meryl, that's a, that's, a, that's a good one for you. What are the common requirements I would need to prepare to be able to... Um, yeah, apply for a business bank and then to basically uh, connect to a payment, payment provider. All right. So basically before payment provider, we need to have a set up business account. So basic requirements is like like I've mentioned um, earlier, business profile, uh, we need to be somehow detailed if we can put our financial plans in the future goal. So at least bank will have a reference. They have a knowledge of, I am like, for example, I'm the bank, I'm opening for this person, for this um, business. I need to house us to understand their business profile because basically the applicants, the companies, they are using the bank's facilities, right? So if possible financial, if they could um, mention it, the business profile, it would be really great. And it would help the bankers or the relationship manager to understand better their business, right? So that's one. And second, all the applicants CV, resume. I got a lot of questions. They're asking why we need to have a resume or CV uh, simply because banks would try to understand if that applicant is well experienced in line with the business they're opening up, right? For example, e-commerce. For example, I'm applying for e-commerce and my, my, my background is basically about hotels industry, about office. So question might raise because they will ask, what do I know about e-commerce, right? unless I have a certain certification of all the studies or basic rules about e-commerce. So that's the reason why they're asking for a resume, right? And of course, um, the most important is the latest six months bank statement. It's mandatory requirement. The reason, um, first reason, because they just want to know the person cash flows, right? So they just want to know if we have a clear record of our financials personally, or if we have other business outside the country or other business we have here in UAE, six months latest bank statement of the company would be fine. They just want to know the basic understanding of how we are dealing with our cash flows, with our financials. 
I hope I, I answered all of that uh, for the second question. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's perfectly fine. And I think as well, let's, let's say in, in other countries, like I'm from Germany and, you know, you have a registrars where, where um, you know, where you get checked on your credibility, on your, on, you know, financial capacity, if you're yes. able to, you know, enter that business or not, we don't have that here in the UAE. So, you know, hence like, you know, failure risks, et cetera, need to be calculated. I think those are the reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and then, I think I've seen a couple of questions coming in as well from Mohammed Taha. Can you register a company when you work as an employee? Yes, you can, but you need an NOC from your employer to do so. And then Jefferson has asked once approved by the bank, can you give us an idea how much will be the opening amount and maintaining balance? Again, that depends on each bank individually. Some banks start with 25,000 in the bank up to 200, 300,000. I've seen like, you know, yes. like quite high amounts as well. Depending mm -hmm. on the activity and the risk your business brings along as well, I think, Meryl, that's what you can um, co-confirm as well, right? Yeah, so basically, um, like uh, what I've mentioned um, from the beginning, um, as, as now, I cannot say like what would be the maintaining balance because upon the application, once we shortlist all the bands, um, part of the, the shortlist we will show with you what is the maintaining balance and what are the charges monthly of those bands. Of course, like I've said, um, as an applicant, as a company or business owner, we are using the bank's facility. So they have like charges um, monthly and as well, they have a different maintaining balance. Like what Yulia has mentioned, um, depending on your jurisdiction, depending on your activity, then there will be a certain different account types. Yeah. 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 And then I think again, Mohammed Taha, what's the minimum cash flow? That's what we just announced and register the company. Yes, you can, but you need an NOC. I think Joseph has asked if I can open a company from Africa online. Yes, you can. You can contact Creative Zone for opening up the license. And then I think let's move further with the questions to make sure yeah. we cover the other topics then as well. Yeah. Um, I think in terms of what are the best used payment gateways, maybe I will let Nico talk because he's the co-founder, but he didn't <laughs> talk even a word yet. <laughs> so let's <laughs> let him also have a word and then explain us what, what are the payment gateways that uh, we could opt for in the UAE. Sure. So, hey, guys, I am Nico and yeah, CTO and co-founder of Creative 971. I'm not having much to do with the kind of normal uh, business operations, right? So from my side, it's more a technical point and directly or most probably yeah, in the dropship questions if it goes around um, Shopify. So if we're talking about um, payment, gateways, uh, payment gateways, the best thing I think what happened um, was that Stripe came finally to the UAE. Um, it was around three months ago. Um, we were... We can still remember like five and a half years ago when we started Shopify, we barely had payment gateways over here working with Shopify. Now it's um, yeah, very established, to be honest. It's already like even um, crypto payments to be um, able to work on the platform. So you see the kind of growth, but still Shopify payments itself, we don't have that yet here because Shopify payments is the, the backbone is Stripe. They use Stripe as the kind of backbone for their um, operations. Once Stripe is fully um, here and onboarded, because they're running still, I think, on their trial. Um, so once this happened, it would allow Shopify to move um, to the UAE. As said, these plans are not confirmed. There is nothing out what I can confirm yet, because we're even just speculating or hoping for that, because once Stripe is there, Shopify Pay would have an easy way to move um, to us, which everyone is waiting for. What you can do right now and what we would recommend is mostly um, using Stripe. Their onboarding yes, um, use very fast, to be honest. It's uh, responsive as well as you can do uh, um, the returns in some of the kind of um, yeah, direct um, you know, commands. You can do them within the Shopify dashboard already. This is a big benefit. And um, yeah, we are, we are able to onboard um, customers faster. Yeah. I think there's two questions from Elil on the, uh, um, um, let's say, <clears throat> credibility into the payment gateway, how quickly it will get to the bank. And then also Naveen's question on if you can use the personal bank account. These are exactly the two questions we're talking about now. Um, like Nico said, I mean, with the payment gateway, there are adaptations, but usually it's not immediately credited because also like, let's say, 
the client will return the item or you would need to go through a refund, you know, instead of the payment gateway to charging back your account and then further charges being involved. They usually have a hold period, which can be anywhere between seven days to up to 30 days, you know, before cashing out. But this is individually discussed with the payment gateway and up on your, you know, withdrawal uh, reference. So it can be done for sure quicker, but usually it's a seven to 14 days. Yeah, and um, some points to be just aware of, um, let's say from running business um, the experience, it's like that, that most of these um, companies, I mean, other payment gateways, that they will ask to withhold 10% for 90 days. So if you're a business which is very hard or tough calculated on cash flow and income, um, this is something what you should keep in mind because even in the, the agreements, like in a kind of small written part from all of these, you will find that um, most of them will um, withhold the money for 10%. This is just um, because of a caution in case there would be any um, fraudulent order or yeah. if there would uh, order which bounces or something that the payment gateway would be covered. Um, this is something only if it comes to cash flow and if you would not be able maybe to operate the business in your current calculation if this would um, be the case. So it's just something you yeah. should be aware of. So we see that a lot of times, especially when it comes to jewelry or higher priced items, right? Banks are getting very, let's say, protective over cashing out. So really, again, it's same as what Meryl said. Each one here is to be seen as individual, depending on where you're registered. Also, what's your nationality? You know, sometimes it's also how many years have you been in the country and what experience you have in the business. So it's not a one size fits all answer. It's really individual. Um, but coming to Niveen's question, if you can use the personal bank account to submit it for a business, of course you cannot, right? Uh, you cannot do that um, because if you're trying to get payments on behalf of a business, it needs to match a business license. Um, some business, uh, sorry, payment providers do allow you to apply on a personal bank account, but given the fact that they see you've already applied for a trade license, so Meryl would be able to give her two cents on that when applying, let's say, for a trade license with Creative Zone. Mm -hmm. They will give you a paper and documentation to show to the payment gateway that you are in process of doing uh, your registration. And then they would normally onboard you, even if it's not already issued from a license perspective. Right, Meryl? Yes. Yeah, so basically, um, for, for, for the business license, right? Um, basically, at least we have a proof to show with the banks, right? That we are in the process of our trade license. Um, the, here's my passport. And as well, take note of um, obtaining a visa and Emirates ID because this is really mandatory. So with all those timeline, of course, we you could start um, meeting with the payment gateway. Of course, some other banks might meet us to to have initial discussion but of course those are important and of course at least we have a justifiable documents that i'm on the process of my of my residence visa my business license and then by then then if you show it with the payment gateway they will do their parts to do to fill up the necessary form on their behalf and then you you could start doing all the procedures but of course license is very important for you to to use for the uh, payment gateway yeah, that for sure. I think that's also leading up to the question um, in terms of is there an alternative solution about Stripe? So also bringing in uh, Anupama's question on CC Avenue. Now, again, it's the same story about the banks as uh, equally as it is with the payment gateways. You do have payment gateways that are requesting a monthly payment. You do have payment gateways that only charge on transaction base. So you cannot say, is this in this payment gateway good? Like you cannot say, is this in this payment gateway good? Is this in this bank good or bad? It depends individually on your requirements, on what platform you use. Is CC Avenue good to be using for Shopify? No, certainly not. Is Stripe use, uh, good to use Shopify? It's the best you can do. On Shopify particularly, you know, do you look at other platforms? We, uh, do you look at WooCommerce? Do you even look, uh, you know, at just sending payment links without having a website yet? You know, there is there is a million factors, and I think that's what makes it so complex to understand. And that's why you need to come, either talk to you know Creative Zone or talk to ourselves when it comes to this specific case, because we have been through so many multiple of people and scenarios that you know we know what works and what doesn't. I mean, from our end, more on Shopify and e-commerce. But I think from Creative Zone more on the 
you know, on the actualization licensing factor. And like Meryl said, based on your activities and measures, I think the, the most thing you should keep in mind is, you know, trying to look what is, what do you need for your business and what is most important? What do you want to achieve, right? What's the objective? And um, I think that would help, um, would help mostly to understand, you know, what questions to ask and where to go. Mm -hmm. You know, there came another question in regards of transaction fees from payment gateways that it's like uh, 3.5%. Um, this, this depends, as I said, on your business, because if you're a new startup, right, if you have not done any kind of online transactions, it might be 3.5 if it's American Express, but it should be somewhere between 2.5 to 3 for normal debit credit cards with our, uh, within the UAE or GCC. Um, but then it will, yeah, kind of um, array based on your order history. So for example, if you're able to provide order history of 100,000 dirham, definitely, you know, or you should get better rates, right? So this is something which, um, yeah, which depends on the payment gateways itself. Yeah, as Julia said, some of them maybe ask you for a higher monthly payment. At the same time, they couldn't reduce them, but yeah, this is something which you would need to clarify with them. Yeah. Totally right. And sometimes it makes sense not to take the cheapest, but maybe the one that's most flexible and works in your favor. So it, it yeah, but definitely here to help. I know there is probably a lot more questions, but I think Zishan, let's probably move on further because we've passed almost half an hour on business banking. Let's also spend some time on logistics because that's equally a huge part when coming to e-commerce in terms of shipping. How do you master that? What are you know the biggest hurdles here? So um, I think I would let Nico also to lead on this, but let's say coming to the first question, what company is a good option for delivery partners in the UAE if the company is a startup and has only five to 10 orders per day at max? Um, yeah, from the experience of the business and what we hear or what we know from the agency, just everything about e-commerce, Right. It is more about, again, what you would want and need depending on your products. Right. Let's say if you would be selling furniture, beds or something just um, bigger, bulky, right, or even mattresses or whatever you might do, um, yeah, you can call some of them like Aramex, they won't take your order. Right. So then you would need to have some other ones in place, which you could use. So defining on your business, let's say if it's a traditional, normal e-commerce business, which is most probably accessories, jewelry or fashion um, clothing. This is what we usually see most common. Right. You could use um, any of these. Um, most of them are working with Shopify um, already together. They have an integration, which means all of the information of the order will automatically go from the order from your Shopify dashboard and admin will automatically go to the um, yeah, shipping company or logistics company, as well as then we have um, other options, let's say in drop shipping and drop shipping, you wouldn't need one because the manufacturer would directly ship to your customer. So this would be out of you know, the requirement, but if you would need that and if you have between five to 10 a day, depending on your um, company and your growth on your business plan, right? It could be something which you should look to move into a fulfillment center. A fulfillment center you, means you're going to outsource all of that pick and pack and the work, which just takes a lot of time, which means you bring all of your items into a warehouse. That warehouse is fully managed and operated with order management systems. Their job is to pick and pack your product for you and get it out with the delivery like provider which you would like and they opt to, to work with for example one which is very good and is opening his third uh, warehouse um, next year it's automize we work with automize together it's a uh, quite um yeah i would say the data integration is uh, extremely solid he called us up i think even two years ago and said he want to work with us and cater to shopify customers we told him if you don't have any kind of integration, how should I refer you to any of our customers? So he worked out an integration and came back last year. And so it's it's quite a good one. It's working out. They can even do um, cosmetics, beauty in industry, and uh, are looking into a cooling um, supply chain as well, because this um, would open up for food, um, for food delivery, which is now coming way, way more common because this is something as well, which um, is not directly common on normal um, yeah, fulfillment centers. I think this would be, if you would talk about um, yeah, shipping fulfillment, 
There is one part which is um, very good. Maybe you have not heard about that. I'm just trying not to talk much, right? I try to tell you all of the insights which you usually won't hear. Um, let's say Emirates. Um, Maybe just one point. I've just posted up Automize UAE and the URL relating in the chat here. Um, go to hit Automize up and then you can definitely give a call as well to Mohammed. Mohammed is actually the um you know person that leads that up he's also in the online course because we do have an online course together with creative zone on actually drop shipping and e-commerce so you will find automize there in terms of shipping packa packaging picking etc and um yeah and nico i'll let you i'll let you continue yeah um you're talking about fulfillment um just saying that depending on what your business needs um, I would say that Automize is the most flexible at the moment. For example, um, we were talking about customers um, which had like quite bulky products and heavy products. But right? even if you would think about maybe cat litter or whatever you would maybe think of, or the, the dog's food, which is quite heavy, um, right? These are usually products which are extremely expensive because of the volumetric rate, which is, will be applied. So let's say if you ship within the UAE, there is there are solutions which do um, yeah up to 20 kg the same prices depending on yeah it's let's say it depends on your requirements. Uh, Mohammed Automize would have a solution. That's why we usually like to work with him because it's easy, it works, and uh, it's uh, we can recommend. Yeah, and then thank you, Abdul Basit. Uh, we saw that you shared your details and, and definitely thank you for your kind words. Definitely happy to take that up. Personally, like if you want to reach out to us, we also have your details. Feel free so we can set up a separate call. Um, other than that, I think um, we've led up to the question and I think that Nico touched based a bit on that, especially food items, cold stored items, furniture items any larger uh, items or items that are not naturally retail or off the shelf or i think even there was a question from joseph about fresh flowers a lot of times you know shipping companies are dedicated so you will find that a lot with food right like food is not necessarily shipped by companies like dhl or rmx you know they will not deliver your food package so you have dedicated shipping providers for each of the industries that you work in um, I think that the same goes to larger shipments. Um, do we have or do we know anyone on fresh flowers particularly, Nico, maybe to answer his um, question? No, because, I mean, yeah, we, we know most probably Mohammed will have an answer for you from Automize, but I don't have any of them now in my mind because companies we were working together, they had all of their in-house delivery if it, came to, yeah, if it comes to food or flowers. Um, so, but if you would look for someone um, on, a, on a flower level, I would reach out to... Uh, yeah, the person working in logistics, which would be here, your contact and automize. Even if you can't work with him, he, he will know the right person to work with. Especially he knows e-commerce. So he is an e-commerce fulfillment company. Yeah, so I think you will get a lot of answers from him. Yeah. And then I think maybe as leading up to the last question, is it important to have a logistic partners? I mean, if you're small and you want to figure it out yourself, it's totally fine if it's within the UAE, but imagine you get a delivery to Abu Dhabi or, you know, maybe to one of the Northern Emirates, then are you really going to deliver it yourself? Most likely not. Um, I don't know, Meryl, if you had anything that you wanted to leave as a comment here on the, on the logistics part, on the shipping part. Uh, from my side, um, not really, but for, for related to banking, um, for if you have like a logistic company, I believe they would they would actually require for a proper warehouse office or like a proper physical where you will conducting the business. So that's another factor for when it comes to banking application. Okay, great. Um, so here there is, is what about cosmetics? Yeah, Automize takes care about cosmetics. So if you want to store it, even with them. No, Automize is not an app. I'm just reading that. Automize is a fulfillment center um, based in Dubai, right? And he is having a seamless integration into uh, Shopify. So you could work with him if it comes to fulfilling your orders, your products. Hmm. Yeah, um, I think if it's important to have a logistics partner for, uh, for a startup company, 
usually what we uh, what we try to recommend even from Julia's side on the mentoring or if we have our trainings um, you know, our startup trainings going on it is more that you should focus on really important stuff you should not focus on daily operations with logistics or even like having kind of issues there so what you what you can do and what you should do is just outsource that right like all of these fulfillment centers and houses they do have insurance so your products are insured they're laying there it's not, nothing which you would need to be afraid of and um, the product is faster um, at all it is just easier for a shipment and you could um, fulfill even um, at the same day delivery um, if you would work with fulfillment centers because it's just uh, what they do for their business yeah over here Yeah, I think those are the points that we had prepared for you today. Um, if there's any individual questions or anything that you say, hey guys, you haven't touched on that, I would actually um, would like to know more about it, then um, it's your time now. <laughs> Big ears to, to squeeze our brains. We have a couple of minutes more to answer your questions and definitely, I mean, would be welcoming you on the 25th to meet us in person. Um, you know, to go through together again, if there's any licensing questions from the topic we've covered last week or any of the coming two weeks that are still going to be um, there for you for free um, in terms of picking our brains and, and making sure we help you to be on the right path. And uh, I think uh, maybe there's something in terms, I think Zeshan was, was having that, um, the comments or the points as well to leading up to next week's sessions as we definitely continue to have our training series Zishan? Uh, yes, I'm just going to share some links on the chat. I'm going to share two links. One, uh, which I received from your team, Julia, for our Shopify event. Maybe you want to talk to them about that. Mm -hmm. Yes, so for the Shopify event um, that Zishan just posted here, it's literally focusing on the dropshipping. Um, what we're doing, and that's why it's called Shopify event, it's a Shopify direct, um, you know, hosted event. That means Shopify um, is attending that event, is also speaking at that event. Um, as we're the leading Shopify agency in the UAE and Middle East, we are um, doing the events for Shopify and we will be having a focused session, not only on dropshipping, but as well on you know, insights over Shopify, a couple of updates on Shopify about our region. So if you're a Shopify focused business, not necessarily only into dropshipping, make sure you hit up and you attend that event. We will have a digital recording as well and be able to plug that in for anyone who's not available to watch. Um, but other than that, hit up the link and sign up. I think it's equally with the online course as well that Zishan will also share with every one of you with the discount code that will allow you guys to save a bit of money and understand more on e-commerce and drop shipping as such. And then, as I said, I can't focus more enough than, you know, attending our personal um, event as well, because that will really, really give a lot of insight. You know, we, we can, you know, address questions right in there and you probably have some time to progress and process on the questions we've touched based on um, throughout the training series. And we'll just give you a lot of time, you know, to ask your individual questions and, yeah, and uh, meet and greet and, and finally, person, yeah, and you know, <laughs> have, a, have a COVID break. And of course, safety measures are applied, but we would really make, um, make sure and be happy to not see only a screen and then faces, but to actually, you know, engage with you and, and help you guys out. Perfect. Um, so, so to the audience, just to let you know, three things. One, the uh, Shopify event, the link for that is mentioned, which Julia mentioned. Second, the online course uh, from Creative971. There is a discount code mentioned, thanks971, which you can use. Um, and then finally, the third thing is the actual physical meet and greet we will be having with Creative971 and Creative Zone at the Creative Zone Business Hub on the 25th of November. It will be at 6 p.m. in our office, Creative Zone Business Hub. Um, we'll of course, we'll have an email sent out to you. And it was also in the first email that you received when you signed up for this program. Um, there, there are a few other questions if you would like to go through them. Uh, sure, uh, in the Q&A, sure. I've just seen that now, yeah. Actually, I've seen one about the loan. Um, let me just recheck. Um, I think um, 
let me just have a look. Um, can I start dropshipping company? Can I get a loan from agent investor in UAE? So basically when it comes to loan and especially for business wise, it's, um, it's tougher nowadays. Um, so basically before we apply for loan as a business profile, they will have a look your basically your financial. So you need to have a business account first and that. So once we apply, they will have a look at least latest couple of months transaction they will have a study on your business profile about the company and then they will it will go through initial approval so it will still go for like somehow a proper procedure for the banking side um however it's not that easy unless all the thick box from the banking from the bank perspective um they might able to approve it but then again it will still go through a lot of documentation and approval but of course company wise they could still try and apply for it yeah great yeah. i think also i've seen a question and i've just answered i've sent it uh, the link from automize again which is the fulfillment center and i've shared the um details on the um course so there's there's a, as Zishan correctly said three things the first is our online series what we're doing with you guys now which is a weekly training series on drop shipping where, uh, where we have a final event as an in-person event. So that's one. Yeah. Second thing is our Shopify meetup, which is next week. That's not an online course. That's like a live webinar, like what we're doing now as well, but focused only on the topic Shopify. And then thirdly, we have an online course that we have shared a code, thanks971, that will allow you to actually claim a discount when you want to go for the online course, uh, dropshipping course, I think Zeshan has just shared it up again in the, in, the, um, in the links. So sorry if that was a bit confusing. I know it's, it's a lot of uh, topics and a lot of different things, but it is happening. You know, November is usually the period where a lot of people get prepped. We have a lot of online events and you see the kind of Dubai business is coming back to a bloom and definitely leveraging on all of the coins. So if anyone has, um, you know, their business in store and they're saying, hey, I need to digitally transform, I need to be ready, I need to, you know, attack the market in a smart way, then this would be your time to reach out to us, uh, whether it be license, business license requirements. I think Meryl is more than happy as well to discuss on, you know, taking forward on the concierge side and our side would be more the uh, e-commerce website and services around uh, you bringing your uh, your business online and um yeah i think i hope i've answered all the questions or did we miss anything is it we're clear right no 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 i think we're good um, okay great then yeah thank you um i think leading up to that we'll be back uh, next week same time same day um with uh, the topic that zishan knows the next week's topic mm -hmm. maybe let's give him a peek yeah so next week uh, we will be having um of course, uh, Nico and Julia with Neha Thomas from Creative Zone, our head of marketing, to be talking about how to be promoting marketing and figuring out a sales strategy for your e-commerce business. So that will be the, 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 the next week. So same time on Wednesday. And then after that, we will have another final webinar with Nico and Julia on how to build your e-commerce website. So I hope these sessions are valuable for you. Um, all the recordings are going to be on our YouTube channel. I have just entered the um, recording from last week on the chat. So if you'd like to see that again, we'll make sure that these links are also emailed to you. If any of you would like to set up your company with us, feel free to email us. The links are all in the chat and will also be emailed to you. Uh, thank you all once again. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. And thank uh, you. Uh, there's one more question, but I believe that, that might have been answered. I can see them in the question box. I think there is one where it's the Shopify meetup. The Shopify meetup is digital, it's online, and Zishan had shared the link. You can also head over to Creative971 Instagram at Creative971. There will be a post today um, on um, Instagram to actually describe and share the link. And I think there's one, Joss, regarding payment gateway. What are the top three payment gateways and which one would you recommend aside from Stripe? Depending on what business you are, um, but the ones which we usually work together is um, checkout.com, work quite often with them. And then it would be most probably a pay tabs, pay forward, as well as my Futura. These are the common ones we usually come across. Uh, opinion on PayPal for dropshipping. Usually in this region, PayPal uh, as such is not recommended at all. Reason being, 
if your business um, is not, sorry, if your PayPal is not a verified uh, business account, then you will most likely have difficulties uh, um, removing your funds or transferring them over to you because usually it's been blocked here in the UAE. Um, if you do have a business PayPal, um, verification process can be quite lengthy, but make sure you have a valid trade license because without a valid trade license, there is no business PayPal account. Other than that, you can happily use it for sure. All right. Um, thank you once again. And uh, thank you so much, Meryl, for being a part of this. It's actually Meryl's birthday, so I want to give a huge shout out to her. Oh. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, it's been a pleasure to be part of this uh, webinar. I'm looking forward as well for, for future webinars. And here we are happy to provide information, uh, information and happy to help you know our future clients and all basically Thank you as well for all the people who joined and I hope you learned something from my side. Um, if you want the more details about when it comes to concierge, business licensing and banking, please do reach out to us and we would definitely assist you accordingly. Excellent. Thank you. Um, thank you all once again and uh, have a great evening. Thank you so yeah. much. Have a good thank evening, guys. everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.